Welcome back to Physics Junction. In today's video, let me go over on carbon nanomaterial. It's just a glimpse of a carbon nanomaterial. I do not go deeper into the topic, but I'm sure you can get some better idea about the different carbon nanomaterials. Let's start with carbon allotropes or carbon based material. Carbon has four valence electrons. The four valence electrons of carbon make the metal as a special material. So it can be linked with other elements by a single, double or a triple covalent bonds. Because of this unique feature, the carbon atom can be polymerized at the atomic level, thus forms very long carbon chains. Therefore, carbon can exist in a range of different molecular form composed of the same type of atoms but with the different structures, so possess the different properties. So that is called carbon allotropes or carbon polymorphs. The two natural carbon allotropes are diamond and graphite. Nanomaterials composed of carbon atoms are termed as carbon nanomaterials. I hope you are all familiarized with the graphene. Graphene forms the basic structure of other carbon based materials. Based on dimensions, the carbon nanomaterials are classified into four types. One is zero dimensional carbon nanomaterial, then one dimensional carbon nanomaterial, two dimensional carbon nanomaterials and three dimensional carbon nanomaterials. Example for zero dimensional materials are small clusters, fluorines and nano diamonds. And for one dimensional carbon nanomaterial, example is carbon nanotubes, then two dimensional nanomaterial, example graphene and graphene. The last one is the three dimensional nanomaterial, carbon nanomaterial, that is diamonds. Here we saw the classification of carbon nanomaterials based on dimension. The first one is graphene, it's a two dimensional carbon nanomaterial. Graphene is nothing but a single layer of graphite crystal, has stacks of carbon layers weakly bound to each other. Each layer has hexagonally arranged carbon atoms, so appear as a single self-standing materials. The mechanical properties of graphene are superior to steel. It is 200 times stronger compared to steel. The next one is nano diamond. Nano diamond are diamond of nanoparticles. The diamond nanoparticles are composed of saturated hydrocarbons that have diamond-like fused ring structures because of chemical inertness, biocompatibility, hardness, optical transparency and a high thermal conductivity. These materials found more applications in various fields. Then we have fluorine. It composed of at least 60 carbon atoms that is nothing but wrapped up graphene buckyball. Then we have carbon nanotubes, so it has sp2 hybridization. So the carbon nanomaterials with the tubular structures composed of rolled graphene sheets, that is tubular form. And then last one is graphene, a fully hydrogenated form of graphene. So graphene plus hydrogen forms graphene. Due to the dangling bonds of carbon atoms, they are passivated by hydrogen. Next, let's see the differences between graphene and graphene. Graphene, a single atomic layer with a thickness of 0.34 nanometer of sp2 hybridized carbon atoms covalently bonded to three other carbon atoms arranged in a honeycomb lattice. Where graphene, a fully hydrogenated form of graphene, it's a stable structure. It consists a graphene layer in which each carbon atom is sp3 bonded to one hydrogen atom above and below the carbon atom in an alternating manner. Graphene is a zero band gap material, so it behaves as a good electrical conductor. Where the graphene is a wide band gap material, it's about 3.5 electron volt. It behaves like a semiconductor or sometimes insulator. Next application, graphene is used as a transparent sensor layer in touch screens to solar cells, batteries and ultra capacitors. Where graphene is used as a hydrogen storage material and a transistor. It retains the thinness, super strength, flexibility and density like graphene. Another form is graphone. It's a partially hydrogenated graphene sheet. It's a midpoint between graphene and graphene. Next, let's move on to fullerene. Already we know fullerene is composed of 60 carbon atoms. It's a cage-like carbon cluster made up of 12 pentagons and 20 hexagons. That is, it has a 5 and 6 membered ring patterns. The carbon atoms are connected by single or double bonds. The fullerene possesses a face-centered cubic structure. 
that is at the corners and the faces of the cube there are ball shaped carbon molecules that is all the carbon atoms are located on the surface of a nearly a spherical figure fullerenes can have 60 70 78 or more carbon atoms and they are named as c60 c70 and c78 c60 is the most stable and spherical in shape Diameter of C60 fullerin is about 0.7 nanometer. Then let's see the properties of fullerin. The behavior and structure of fullerin depend on temperatures. The ionization enthalpy of fullerin is about 7.61 electron volt. Electron affinity is between 2.6 to 2.8 electron volt. It acts as an electrophil, that is electron deficient species. Also, it acts as an oxidizing agent. When doped or crystallized with alkaline earth metal, it showcases superconductivity properties. Mostly the fluorine are ferromagnetic in nature and they are soluble in organic solvents such as toluene, chlorobenzene and 1,2,3 dichloropropane. Next let's see graphene. It's one atom thick two dimensional honeycomb lattice of sp2 hybridized carbon atoms. So here each carbon atom bound to three others creating a hexagonal pattern. It is one million times thinner than diameter of a single human hair. It's an excellent conductor of heat and electricity and has interesting light absorption abilities. The significant features are high surface area, good biocompatibility, strong mechanical strength, excellent thermal conductivity and fast electron transportation. Then we see properties. It conducts electricity better than copper, 200 times stronger than steel, at the same time 6 times lighter than steel. It's perfectly transparent since it absorbs only 2% of light. Also, it is impermeable to all other gases except to hydrogen. The last one is applications of graphene. It found more applications in nanoelectronics and electrochemical power engineering, used as membrane material for desalination and water purification. The next one is carbon nanotubes. It's a one dimensional form of carbon. It consists of rolled sheets of single layer carbon atoms. Based on structure, the carbon nanotubes are two types. One is single walled carbon nanotube and the second one is multi walled carbon nanotube. The single walled carbon nanotube diameter is about one nanometer. Multi walled carbon nanotubes diameter is more than 100 nanometer. It has several concentrically interlinked nanotubes. The length of the multi-walled carbon nanotubes are several micrometers or even millimeters. Based on the orientation of hexagons, the single-walled carbon nanotubes are of three types. One is armchair, the second one is zigzag and third is the chiral. In the armchair type, the hexagons are lined up to the axis of the nanotube and their electrical properties are like metals and these armchair type carbon nanotubes are used to connect devices in integrated circuits. So it can be useful in replacing the metal lines in integrated circuits. The second type is zigzag. So here the hexagons are oriented in a circle around the nanotube and their electrical properties are like semiconductors. Third type is the chiral. Here the hexagons do not form any line. They are useful in building the ever smaller transistors. Next one is properties of carbon allotropes. The different carbon allotropes show different properties. The bond length for diamond is 1.54 angstrom, where for graphene it is 1.42. The carbon nanotube bond length is 1.44 angstrom, and the fullerene or the zero dimensional material has the bond length of 1.40. The next one is the band gap energy. So the band gap energy of a diamond is 5.47 electron volt. So it's an insulator where the graphene is a zero band gap material. So it behaves like a metal or a semi metal. The band gap of carbon nanotube is about one electron volt where the fluorine has the band gap of 1.9 electron volt. So the last one gives the density of uh, each carbon allotropes. So this is our last part, application of carbon based nanomaterial in environmental and agricultural sectors. Since the different applications are increasing crop yield, nano encapsulation, plant production, antimicrobial agents, nanobiotechnology, sorbents, environmental sensing and renewable energy. I hope at the end of this video you got some good idea about carbon nanomaterials. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching.